Hello, and welcome to this introduction to the Sociology of the Life course. My name is Nigel Ketley, and I teach sociology here at the Institute of Continuing Education. What I'd like to do in this session is talk about how your individual life is shaped by wider social forces. Just how much personal freedom do we have in selecting our journey through life? Contemporary sociologists have rejected the idea of a life cycle, the idea that all of our lives move through fixed stages, including childhood, adulthood, and old age, and they've rejected this as biologically deterministic. So if we take the idea of childhood, for example, it's not fixed, it's not predetermined. It varies historically and between societies. In the Middle Ages, for example, the idea of a child didn't exist as we understand it today. Children were simply little adults. The notion of childhood really developed in the 16th and 17th century with the emergence of formal schooling, the development of the nuclear family. So being a child is something which has changed throughout history. And the idea emerged relatively late in history. If we think about our own times, then the notion of childhood varies enormously between societies. In less developed economies, for example, childhood is associated with work, paid employment in factories or in agriculture. Whereas in more developed societies, childhood is a relatively privileged period of prolonged education and financial dependence on parents. So for the sociologist, the important thing to realize is that the life course is socially constructed. And what I mean by that is meaning is ascribed to specific periods of our life. And the life course is embedded in wider social processes. Now, we all take on various roles throughout life, child, student, employee, parent. Our life is ordered temporally. But it's important to remember that our trajectory through life isn't fully determined. It's not a fixed pathway determined purely by time or by the society we live in. We all have a degree of personal choice. We all experience transitions in our life. We go to school, we start university, we start a job, we get married, divorced, we retire. So transitions refer to changing periods of changed status in our life. And some of these transitions can be really very profound and sociologists have referred to them as turning points. A turning point is when our life can take a fundamentally different trajectory, influenced by the society we live in, by social, political, economic forces beyond our control. So for example, I grew up in Hull in the late 1970s and 80s, and my decision to study A-levels and go to university might seem like an expression of free will, but it was profoundly shaped by the mass unemployment of the period. My choice was circumscribed by the historical and social conditions I experienced. For all of us, the balance between freedom and curtailed opportunity in the life course is something that we should be able to identify if you reflect on your own life and your own life course, you should be able to identify specific turning points where what you have done has been influenced by wider social forces. Now, the idea of turning points is particularly important because it's often associated with strongly positive or negative emotional experiences. In my own case, for example, when I went to university, I found this an immensely liberating experience. 
it was a dramatic turn in my life, which was associated with increased personal freedom, increased autonomy, learning. But of course, turning points can also be associated with trauma to the person, where a dramatic change in our life negatively influences our experiences and can result in psychological damage, for example. The research of Professor Diane Ray in the Faculty of Education at the University of Cambridge specifically looks at the experiences of working class pupils at the University of Cambridge. And she finds and argues that many of them experience Cambridge as a traumatizing thing because that's the shout of water. They don't fit in. They come to a culture dominated by middle class values where they find that their own community, their own culture, their own beliefs don't actually align with what the university expects of them. And this can influence not only the experience they have in Cambridge, but their academic success. It's important to realize when we think about sociology of the life course, it can't give us a definitive answer to just how circumscribed our life is by wider social forces. We can't actually say people have X amount of freedom to shape their own life. But I would argue as a sociologist, studying the life course is fundamentally important because it allows you to reflect on your own life. And most importantly, it should allow you to reflect on the impact of context, of time and place on the unfolding of your life. It should also allow you to recognize that our life course is interlinked with the experience of other people. And what I mean by that is, None of us live our lives independently. We are mutually bound together and our trajectory through life is determined by others. Finally, when we reflect on the importance of the sociology of the life course, we need to recognize that our individual freedom, our choices, our opportunities are constrained by wider social inequalities like social class, for example, or gender, or ethnicity. And these social inequalities also profoundly shape the trajectory of our life. If you're interested in developing an understanding of sociology of the life course, why not think about joining me on a short course that's running at Maddingley in March 2021? Um, I'll be teaching a course, Trajectories and Turning Points, an introduction to the sociology of the life course. If you're interested in sociology more broadly in some of the issues we've discussed today, why not think about enrolling in our new certificate in sociology or our certificate in politics, which will be starting in 2021. It will be good to see you there. Mm -hmm.